Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you shut off your hot and cold water supply and remove the drain hose from the wall. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool washer tub seal. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the instruction sheets, the new wire harness holder, the tube of grease, and the new tub seal. The tub seal seals the outer tub where the drive shaft comes through. The main reason you'll be changing it out is if it's damaged and you're getting water leaking on the floor. In order to change the part, we have to go around to the back of the machine. Now that we're on back, we're going to put a towel down to catch any water that may come out when we take the fill hoses off. We can use the pliers to take off the hoses. You want to make sure you remember which one's hot and which one's cold so you don't mix them up when you put them back on. Once you have them loose, you can just unscrew them by hand. Now that we have the fill hoses off, we're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to take out the screw. We have to take the small access panel off so we can lift up the top. Once you have the screw out, you can swing it over and pull it out. Now we're going to take out the upper screw on both hinges. Now that we have the screws out, we can go around front so we can lift up the top. Before we lift the top up, we're going to take a piece of tape and tape the lid down so when we lift it up, it doesn't fall. Now that we have the lid taped down, we're going to come around to the front and we have to pull the whole top forward to release it from the locking tabs on the front. If you have to, you may have to grab it all the way in the back and pull forward pretty hard. Once you have it released, you can lift up on the front a little bit and it's going to stop. You're going to have to push it back a little bit so it releases from these hooks and then we can lift up on it. If you're going to rest this against the wall, you want to make sure you put a towel across here so you don't scratch anything. We're just going to use a lanyard we're going to hook it in the top and on the cabinet so we can support it. Now that we have the top lifted up, we can take the tub cover off. It's held in by some locking tabs all the way around it. We're going to push down above each locking tab to compress the seal a little bit. That'll make it easier for the tab to unlock. And if you have to, you can use a small flathead screwdriver behind it to help lift it off. Once you have the first one done, you want to pull up on a little bit so it doesn't lock into place. And then we can go around and do the rest of them. Once you have all the tabs released, you can lift the tub cover off and set it aside. Now that we have the tub cover off, we're going to take the wash plate out. But first, we have to remove the cover that covers up the bolt. There's a little tab right here. All you have to do is get in here with a small flathead screwdriver and lift it up. Once you have the cover off, you can set it aside. Now we can take the wash blade bolt out. We're going to use a 7 16 inch socket with a ratchet and a long extension. As you're breaking it free, you're going to have to hold the tub so it doesn't spin. Once you have the bolt out, you can lift it out and set it aside. Then we're going to lift up on the wash plate. All you have to do is lift straight up on it so it comes off the splines. Once you have it out, you can set it aside. Now that we have the wash plate out, we're going to put some towels down to cover up the holes in the bottom of the tub so that when we take the drive block out, nothing falls down through them, gets stuck or lost. Now that we have the towels in there, we can take out the drive block. Anytime you take the machine apart, like we are, to change the tub seal or anything else, for any reason that you take this drive block out, you're going to have to replace it. The manufacturer suggests not reusing it. So when you look at yours, it's probably going to be pretty dirty. So you want to take a wire brush and clean up all these screw holes and get it so the screws are visible and clean. You can also take some penetrating oil and soak this area so that as you're taking the nut out, it starts to work on that and gets the screws loose. To get the spanner nut off, if you don't have the special wrench, you can just take a hammer and a screwdriver and tap on the notches to break it free. 
We have the spanner wrench, so we're going to use it. You just have to set it down onto the nut. Once you have it on there, you want to take a plastic hammer or rubber mallet and tap the spanner wrench counterclockwise. It's a regular thread. You may have to use your forearms to kind of hold the tub so it doesn't spin as you break the nut free. Once you have it free, you can unscrew the nut by hand. Now that we have the nut off, we're going to use a big Phillips screwdriver to take out these four screws. You want to be careful as you're taking these out. You don't want to use a power tool. If you break any of these screws off inside the tub, you're going to have to replace the tub. Now that we have the four screws out, we can take the last two out. You want to reach in and hold the tub up. Once you remove these, the tub's going to settle down a little bit, and you don't want it to strip the threads out. Now that we have all the screws out, you want to take a putty knife and go around this area and carefully clean everything out. The hub may actually be stuck to the basket. So you want to get that area clean, and then you can lift the hub off. Now that we have the hub out of the way, we can take the drive block off. Same as the hub, this may be stuck on there pretty good. So you can take some penetrating oil and get it down here in the splines and let it soak in and clean this area up really good. Once you have everything cleaned out, you can very carefully get underneath the drive block with a flathead screwdriver and pry up on it. If it's stuck on there really good, you may not be able to get it off, so we're going to have to take a chisel and you'll have to split it down the side. So you just want to basically tap on it and cut the spline so it breaks in half, being careful that you don't hit the splines on the drive shaft. Once you have the drive block free, you can pull it out. Now that we have the drive block out, you want to clean this area up as much as possible. You can leave your towels in here. And then we're going to lift the inner tub out. When you're lifting a tub up, you may have to rock it back and forth a little bit to break it free if, if it's caught up in any gunk. Once you have it free, you can lift it out and set it aside. Now that we have the inner tub out, we're going to close the top. We're just going to carefully take the lanyard out and set it aside. As you're lowering the top down, you want to make sure that the little tab here goes up into the opening. Then you can pull forward on the top, then push down on it, and push back to lock it in. Once you have the top in place, we can go around back and put the screws in. Now that we're on back, we're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to put the screws in. We're only going to put the two screws in the hinges that hold the top on. Now that we have the screws in, we can go back to the front of the washer. Now that we're back around the front of the washer, we're going to put a towel down on the floor so we don't scratch the front of the washer when we lay it down. Once you have the towel down, you can carefully lower the washer down and set it on its front. If you need to, you can get somebody to help you so you don't drop it. Now that we have the washer on its front, we can access the bottom. We have to take off the sound shield, so we're just going to reach in and flex it and pull it out. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the sound shield off, we're going to take the wiring harness off the motor. There's three locking tabs right here that you have to press to release. It's kind of hard to do all three at once. So we're going to take the small flathead screwdriver and lift up on the middle one so it's already released. And then we can push on the two outer ones and pull the wire harness block off. Now that we have the wire harness off the motor, we can take the wire harness connectors off the capacitor and the shifter. We're going to do the capacitor first. There's a locking tab on the top, so we're just going to pinch on it to release it. We can pull the wiring harness off. Then we can reach in and do the shifter. There's two release tabs on the shifter that you kind of have to reach across and press on. Once you have them depressed, you can pull the wire harness out. 
With the wire harness off the shifter, we have to remove the wire harness retainer from the transmission. You can just pop it off with a small flathead screwdriver. Or you could damage it, they give you a new one in the kit. Once you have that out, you can just set the wiring harnesses aside. And then we're going to take out the drain pump. To get the drain pump out, we're going to use a 5 16 inch nut driver to take out the three screws that hold it to the tub. Once you have all three screws out, you can let the drain pump go. We're not going to take the drain pump off the hose, we're just going to leave it hang out of the way. Now we can take the transmission out, it's held in by four screws, one on each corner. We're going to use a 10 millimeter socket with a ratchet and a long extension to take them out. Before you take the last screw all the way out, you want to make sure you support the motor and the transmission so it doesn't fall. Once you have all four screws out, you can pull the transmission assembly out. You may have to shake it back and forth a little bit to get it to come out. Once you have it out, you want to carefully set it down so you don't damage the, the belt shield. And normally the seal will be stuck right here. This is where the new one's going to go, but if it happened to stick in the tub, you can just reach up and carefully pull it out. Here's the old tub seal next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. We do have to grease up the tub seal before we put it in. There's a little pocket inside here that we want to make sure that we fill up with grease, and then we want to fill up this area also. So we're just going to use the grease that came in the kit and stick the nozzle right down in this little channel so we can get grease down there. Once you have the grease inside, you can just smooth it around so all the creases are filled up. Once you have the tub seal greased up, we can grab the zip tie and put them both in the washer. Before we put the tub seal on, we want to make sure that the shaft is cleaned up and there's no rough edges that might damage the seal as we put it on. And also you want to clean this area down here so it can seat properly. Once you have everything cleaned up, you can line up the tub seal and put it down the shaft. Once you have it down onto the transmission, you just want to push it down so it's even. And then we can grab some towels. We want to clean off all this excess grease. We don't want that to get back in the washer and get in your clothes. Once you have the grease cleaned up from putting the tub seal on, we're going to clean the area on the outer tub where the seal actually sits. I want to make sure you get this clean so there's nothing in here that might cause a problem. Once you have that cleaned up, you can put the transmission back in. All you have to do is pick it up and we're going to line up the shaft and push it all the way up into place. Once you get it to the point where the seal is hitting the lip, you might have to rock it back and forth a little bit and push up on it to get the seal to seat all the way. Once you have the transmission seated, you're going to have to hold it while we grab that 10 millimeter socket and the ratchet and the extension and put one of the screws in. As you're tightening these screws down, you don't want to over tighten them. These weren't that tight when we took them out. You just want to snug them down to about the same as they were when you took them out. This is a plastic tub, and if you happen to strip one of the screws out, the manufacturer put an extra hole just in case that happens.
Now that we have the transmission mounted, we can change out the wire tie that holds the wire harnesses. You're going to have to carefully take a wire cutters and cut the zip tie off. You want to be careful you don't hit any of the wires. Once you have the old one off, you can wrap the new one around. As you're putting the wire tie on, you want to make sure it goes around just these wires. You don't want to get the drain pump wires in there twice. Once you have it tightened down, we can cut off the excess. Now we can put the drain pump back in. If you turn this over and notice any gunk on your seal or any on the tub right here, you want to make sure you clean this area up so you get a good seal and we put the drain pump back in. Once you have it cleaned up, we can put it back in. You may have to turn it a little bit to get the seal to go in all the way. Once you have it in and lined up, you may have to hold it while we put the first screw in. We're going to use our 5 16 nut driver to put the screws in. Now we can attach the wiring harness to the transmission. All you have to do is line it up and push it into the hole. Then we're going to hook up the wiring harness to the shifter. All you have to do is line it up, push it down into place. It should lock into place so you get a good connection. And then we can connect the wire harness to the capacitor. Same thing, line it up and push it on so it snaps into place. To reconnect the wiring harness on the motor, all you have to do is plug it in, make sure it goes on all the way so you get a good connection. Once you have it reconnected, we can put the sound shield back on. To put the sound shield in, we're going to put it in the same way we took it out. Just want to make sure you get all the corners in. Once you have it in, we can put the washer back up on its feet. Remember the washer is heavy, so if you need to get somebody to help you, you can. And we're just going to lift it up and set it on its feet. Once you have it up, you can pull the towel out. Now that we have the washer back on its feet, we can go around back and use the quarter inch nut driver to take out the two screws that we put into the hinges. Now that we have the screws out, we can go around front. Now that we're on front, we can lift up the top just like we did before. We're going to pull forward on it to release it. We lift up on it, push it back a little bit, and lift up some more. Once you have it all the way up, we can grab our lanyard and support the top. Now we can put the inner tub back in. All you have to do is lift it into place and carefully set it down onto the shaft. Now we can put the drive block on. You just want to lower it into place and line the splines up and push it down into place. You want to make sure that these tabs right here sit all the way down against that metal rim of the drive shaft. If it's tight, you can try to tap it down a little bit just to make sure it's all the way down. And then we can put the hub in. All you have to do is lower this down and line it up so the screw holes are lined up. Once you have the hub in, we're going to Put the towels back into the bottom of the tub. You don't want to drop any screws down these holes. Once you have the towels in, we're going to look at the screw holes. The screws are going to go in the recessed area. So you want to look through and make sure that the screw holes in the inner tub are lined up. If they're not, you may have to spin this until you get them to line up so the screws will go in straight. Once you have the holes lined up, we're going to have to put in the two screws opposite each other. We're going to have to lift up on the tub again, just like when we took them off. You don't want to try to lift up the tub with the threads. You'll damage the tub. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to put all these back in. You don't want to use a power one. Make sure you use a hand screwdriver so you don't strip anything. Now that you have those two screws in, you can let go of the tub and we can put in the other four. Once you have all the screws in there, 
we're going to go and tighten them down one more time just to make sure everything's settled and that there's not a screw that came loose as you tighten down the other ones. You may have to hold the tub as you tighten all these down. Once you have all the screws tightened down, we can grab the towels and pull them out. Once you have the towels out, we can put the spanner nut on. To put the spanner nut on, we're just going to get it started. It's regular threads, tighten it down clockwise. Once you have the nut on there, we're going to put the spanner wrench on there and just tighten it down. You just want to basically tighten it down until it stops and you can't turn it by hand. Once you get it to this point, we're going to use our hammer and we're going to tap it so this goes over three quarters of a turn. So we're going to have this handle go all the way up over here. If you don't have the spanner wrench, you can just use the screwdriver again with a hammer and pound the notch over. We're going to use a plastic hammer so we don't damage the tub. And as you reach in, you're going to have to try to hold the tub in case it tries to turn. So we're going to use our arms while we tap on the spanner nut wrench. Once you have it tightened down, you can pull the spanner wrench off and we can put the wash plate back in. To put the wash plate in, all you have to do is set it down so it lines up on the splines and push it all the way down. When we took the wash plate bolt out, we noticed there was some thread locker on it. So we're going to put some new blue thread locker on it before we put it back in. Once you have it on the threads, we can put the bolt in. Now we can use the 7 16 inch socket with the ratchet and the long extension to tighten down the bolt. Once it starts to tighten down, you may have to hold on to the tub so it doesn't spin while you tighten the bolt down. Now we can put the cap back on. You want to make sure the notch for the screwdriver lines up with one of the ribs. Once you have it lined up, you can just snap it in place. Now we can put the tub cover back on. To put the tub cover on, we're just going to line it up and set it into place. You want to make sure all the locking tabs line up and that the bleach dispenser cup is right here in the front left corner. Once you have it all lined up, you can go around and push all the locking tabs on so they snap in. Now that we have the tub cover on, we can lower the top. To lower the top down, we're going to take the lanyard off if you had one. Once you have the lanyard off, we can lower the top down. As you lower it down, you want to make sure that these tabs right here go into the cutouts in the top. Once you have it set down, we're going to have to pull the whole top forward so it goes over the locking tabs in the front. Then you can push down and back on it. Once you have the top pushed back into place, we can take the tape off. Then we can go around back and put the screws in the hinges. We're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to put these screws in. To put the smaller panel on, you just have to line up the two mounting tabs and swing it over. Once you have it lined up, you can put the screw in. Now that we have all the screws in, we can reattach the fill hoses. You want to make sure you put the hot on the hot and the cold on the cold. We're going to get them started by hand so we don't cross thread them. Once you have them started, you can use the pliers to tighten them down so you get a good seal. Now that we have the fill hoses on, we can plug it back in, turn the water back on, put the drain hose back in, and run it through the calibration mode. In order to do that, we have to get it into diagnostic mode. So you want to make sure that you hit the power button since you just plugged it in. Hit the power button and turn everything off. And then we're going to turn the control knob. We're going to go one or two clicks to the left, and then three to the right, and then one to the left, and one back to the right. You have to do this fairly quick. You have a half a second per click. 
if you take too long, it won't go into the diagnostic mode. So we're going to go to the left first. One, two, back to the right, 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 left, and right. Once you have it in diagnostic mode, all these lights down here should be flashing. If they're not flashing, you may not have turned the timer dial fast enough, so you may have to do it again. We're going to turn the knob again so we get just the rinse light lit up. Once you have that lit up, we can hit the start button and run the calibration mode. Once the calibration cycle is done, your washer should be ready to go. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.